What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Knots Week 2024. We have a great video. These next two videos that you're watching, this one and tomorrow's, are going to be uh, usually some of our more popular ones because these are our hype lists. Now, before we get started, I'd like you to uh, know a little something. Just because we rank what we rank for our hype list from lowest to, to highest doesn't necessarily mean we hate any zone or show or maze um, any less. It, it's more or less what we experienced last year and how hyped we are coming into this year. Now, I have been keeping my ear to... Uh, you know, everything going around Not Scary Farm. And to my understanding, it looks like it's going to be a really solid year for the Scare Zones. Um, if you guys follow some of the Scare Actors on social media, a lot of people have been coming out and saying where they're going to be scaring. So I'm excited to see who's going where and uh, some new faces to new, uh, new zones. Um, some old faces going to new places. Like, it's going to be awesome to see what um what's going down now first and foremost i want to talk about the scare zones this one this video is going to be scare zones and shows so bear with me we have i think five scare zones and four shows so here we go i'm going to start off with my scare zones coming at number five for me is the gauntlet now i had a lot of fun watching coming through the gauntlet um i just think i was expecting a little bit more from like kind of like the old school gauntlet uh but nonetheless it was cool because the gauntlet was the only place that had a slider show and it uh it was also bringing slider shows back to not scary farm so that was really cool to see so i'm excited for the slider show again if they do do a slider show this year again but yes, Gauntlet number five for no other reason other than I think uh, I think it was a little overhyped for the 50th. Um, but that being said, I'm excited to see it again. Coming in at number five for me will be the Gauntlet. Although it was new to the event or returning to the event, uh, to be more clear, a, a, a retake on an old scare zone. I just wasn't feeling it last year, to, to be completely frank and honest. It's the Camp Snoopy area is a very, very tough area to scare in, although the ground is like butter from what I've been told by various sliders. Um, the, it just was not there this this previous season, so I'm not super excited to go back to this zone. It's often overlooked, um, so the gas traffic is not there. Um, and although there are great actors in that area and they do a good job when you do find them, there's been times where there's been actors few and far between when you're walking through there um so it's it's normally just uh you know we'll, we'll try to camp out there every night but it's not the the thing we're looking forward to uh, unfortunately and maybe we'll be proven wrong this year because i know when we go to another zone that's higher up on my list i was had them low on my list and they turned out to be rather towards the top uh my number five is gonna be the gauntlet um I feel like it just needs a little bit more adjustment and the footprint itself is kind of like a pathway so you find yourself at one end and just working your way all the way through to the other side without really stopping and spending enough time there in between and carnival number five again this is no this is not to say one particular zone is the characters are better i think they all kill it just overall for me i think um the way i would put it I would have Goring 20s above Carnival just for the fact is I like the immersiveness of Goring 20s, how they kind of just involve the people walking through uh, their zone and, and get you into a, a lull you into a sense of, okay, yeah, cool. Hey, they're talking to me. And then all of a sudden, you know, they f flip the switch and they're scaring you. So. Number four for me is the goring 20s now i love the goring 20s i think it is a fun zone a really well themed zone and with the addition of room 13 right there it, it really sells the whole story overall so 
Uh, I'm excited to see some new faces in the Goring 20s this year and uh, what the approach is for this new cast, some returning, some new. Uh, let's see what the approach is this year and let's see what people can pull out this year for the Goring 20s. I'm excited to see everyone uh, lose their mind over the Devil's Elixir. That's always fun. Um, and just to see what stories we hear from all the different residents of memory lane uh, that were fallen to tragedy under the devil's elixir. So yeah, excited to see that excited to see what they do this year. Number four for me is going to go to Goring twenties. Goring twenties is another area where it's just super awesome to be able to walk through there. Um, I was really excited when they brought a zone to that area. And then now that they've enhanced the theming over up on that, area of the park it's super awesome uh the foot traffic's also increased with the addition of room 13 um since now the audience is captivated to go up that way um, and i really love the way that the actors play in this area um although it's super bright and under the lights they do a great job of finding creative ways to scare the audience um and so kudos to them for that um, but it's just it, it's tough to break the the top three this year my number four is going to be Forsaken Lake. Um, I'm really excited to see what they're going to have this year for Forsaken Lake. I know that they're talking about kind of stepping it up a bit. And so I'm really excited to see that. Um, the other reasons why it's my number four is just it's kind of a small footprint. I feel like they need to have a little bit more access to go a little bit further. This is a tough one. Now this one right here, number four and number five is tough. I still haven't even decided yet because one like going twenties is so entertaining and, and, and they're both the, both these uh, it's good between carnival and, and going twenties. They're both entertaining in, in different ways. Um, carnival is entertaining because of how chaotic it is and just how the clowns are everywhere and all the things they're doing. And, and just chasing people around the boardwalk. Whereas going 20s, it's entertaining for the purpose of like, they're almost just like role playing with you. Like as you walk through there, you're teleported into the 20s and these people are role, role playing with you and they make you a part of the zone almost. Whereas I feel like Carnival, you're, they're scaring you. They're there to try and scare you, straight up scare you. Where Goring 20s is they want to lull you into a sense of like, hey, welcome into our world. And then they get you. So both very entertaining, both very fun. Um, I love you, Carnival, but I'm going to go. I'm gonna, Now that I'm thinking about it more, Goring 20s is probably going to be number four for me and Carnival number five. Number three is going to Carnival. Now... Uh, I love me some clowns. Carnival has been a great zone for us in the past, uh, delivering some amazing clips uh, and just amazing talent over the years that we've seen come and go uh, in that zone. So I'm excited to see what they do this year uh, as far as 51 goes. And I'm excited to see uh, some new faces that we got to get a preview of on the uh the reveal night, so I'm excited for that, and I'm excited to see what uh, everything's going to look like as far as aesthetic wise goes this year. Because I'm I'm hearing a lot of, lot of uh, awesome ideas out there, so I'm excited to to see it come to life. So it's going to be uh, an amazing amazing time in Carnival this year. At number three, I'm gonna go with Forsaken Lake, which was the scare zone I mentioned earlier that I was completely shocked by. That zone killed it. It was so much fun. Um, on the few nights I was able to visit Scary Farm, I always made time to spend at least an hour over there. Um, the ambiance and, and set decor is super awesome, and the actors were absolutely destroying it. Um, I loved watching them going in and, and combining as teams to really conquer people's fears um, and, and get them real nice and scared. Um, so kudos to them for that. Um, and the procession each and every night is so awesome to watch. Um, and I was really, really excited when I when I seen that zone finally come to life. Because previous years, 
we were always underwhelmed by it, but that last year it was super awesome. So kudos to everyone that worked hard on making that zone what it was. My number three scare zone uh, for the hype list is going to be the Goring 20s. I can't seem to get enough of that jazz band, and we find ourselves in the Goring 20s quite often. It's fun to see the death bell and, again, the jazz band, but there's just a lot of interactions happening in Goring 20s, and that's why it's my number three. Next on the list is Forsaken Lake. Um, you know, I think throughout the years, Forsaken Lake has really improved uh you know it, it just the, and i know it's hard uh, uh that zone's so big it's so big and i don't know if they it, it have enough people to make it feel full but when they do the procession and all that stuff that, that that's just killer but you know they they can't have everyone out there at once um you know there's a cast change and all that stuff but i think overall i i really enjoy how forsaken lake has progressed um, the, the characters do a really good job again in all these zones is, is nothing to do with, with the characters. Cause we can always rely on them to kill it. So again, for me, number three is forsaken Lake. Number two is ghost town. Now, usually this is my number one, but I had to save my number one for something else this year. But nonetheless, Ghost Town, it's Ghost Town. I mean, it doesn't get any more. There, there's no more explanation than that. It's Ghost Town. They have Fog Alley. They have iconic characters. Um, and I really think uh, it's just a, a fun vibe to be at Ghost Town. I mean, there's so many good spots that are just covered with fog that uh, it, it just becomes uh, something that it's just fun to walk through and and just be around and then to hear all the screams <laughs> all you know the sound uh, the score in the background uh you know everything you put that all together and it makes ghost town ghost town uh so i'm excited to see what ghost town has to offer this year i know a lot of people retired last year for the 50th so i'm excited to see what new faces come in and what new characters are being brought and introduced to the lore that is not scary farm. Number two for me um, on my most anticipated scare zones will be going to Ghost Town, uh, the original scare zone at Not Scary Farm. I think that this zone kills it each and every year. And I will, sp having planned to go to the farm a, a few nights this year, I know I'm going to spend a lot of time just sitting and on a bench wherever I can find one or the bench if I if it is available just watching the monsters work in this area it's always a highlight of the season to see which creative new ways people will use very familiar ground um, to find new ways to scare um, and and build on the lore um, since ghost town just has so so much going on my number two is actually gonna be the zone that we wind up spending the most time in and I absolutely love it it's beautiful but I can't pass up on my number one. My number two is going to be Ghost Town Streets. Um, yeah, like I said, I love it. I love the interactions. I love the characters. Um, next on the list for me is the Gauntlet. I, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, and this type of scare zone really works for me. I think um, last year they were finding their footing, uh, um, and... And uh, I went early in the season and I went later in the season. I definitely feel like things improved in that zone. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And by process elimination, number one, which the only reason it's number one is because we had a great time in this zone last year. They pulled out all the stops last year and, and really impressed us during the 50th. We even dedicated our first themed podcast month to this zone uh, earlier this year, and that is Forsaken Lake. Uh, you know, in the past, we've we've said things like, you know, this is a beautiful zone. It's just not their scare factor yet, all that stuff. Last year, they they nailed it. They, they, they hit it out of the park. Uh, last year was a very great energetic year. And I, I never thought in a million years I'd be able to see that outside, uh, out of, you know, Forsaken Lake. I always thought it was a beautiful zone. 
you know, there was a couple scares here and there, but this last year they just kind of gave it their all. And I was hella impressed by that. Um, I've talked to a lot of, uh, monsters that are going to be returning this year to that zone and how they're telling me they're going to bring the same energy and even more than that, there's going to be some new faces probably joining the zone on top of that. So I'm excited to see what Forsaken Lake has to bring to the table this year. It's probably my most hyped um, to, to see what they have to bring to the table this year. So I cannot wait to see uh, Forsaken Lake. But my number one is Carnival Clowns. And, you know, I just love clowns. So I got to put them up in number one. And again, I love the interactions that you get in Carnival and love seeing all the different characters and just how different they are from one another. Meanwhile, all still maintaining the same color schemes and, you know, working together to kind of lend stories to one another or, you know, uh, tie in together, so to speak. I'm in mean, last and certainly not least. Number one for me this year is going to go to Carnival. Um, when making my list, I just felt like something's going to change this year. I think that the evil is going to be put back into Carnival this year. Um, and I'm excited to see how that plays out. I know that there's new faces um, coming up into that area. So I'm excited to see how they work together with the existing cast. Um, and overall, it's just a really fun time over there. So I'm excited to be able to go find some time to catch a planner and watch to see what happens in Carnival. I, I'm going to go number one is Ghost Town for me. I love it. It's just, you know, Western vibes. I'm a big Western person. So that, that fits that fits for me. Now, those are all my scare zones. Now we're going to move on to the portion of the episode where we talk about all of our shows. And there's only four shows this year. We got... Um... Starting in at number four for me is going to be yours truly, yours truly Elvira experience. Um... It's mostly going to be just a kind of a compilation show. Um, I thought Music Monsters and Mayhem last year was good. I thought Puppet Up was amazing. Um, so to see this kind of take over that theater and just kind of be more of a tribute show or like a compilation show, I don't know if there's going to be live actors in this one. But from what it sounds like, from what we've been told, it sounds like it's going to be basically a compilation show celebrating all the years of Elvira, which is cool because Elvira has put many years into this park, but... I don't know. I just feel like you could be putting, again, another Music Monsters and Mayhem. That was a lot of fun. Um, or just bring back Puppet Up. Puppet Up. I love Puppet Up. I love improv. And to do it with puppets, it's, it was hilarious. So, I don't know. We'll see what that's like. At number four, I'm going to go with Conjurers. Conjurers um, is back again for another year at the Birdcage Theater. Um, it's a cool show if you've never seen it before, but if you've seen it a few times, um, it's basically the same show year in, year out. Um, so not super, super excited for that. Um, but if, you know, time does permit, I will check this one out. And see if I can pronounce this. Uh, it is Le Magnifique Carnival du Grotesque and the Calico Mine stage. And it's pretty much... Uh, it's like a like a stunt show, like a deaf defined stunt show is what I read. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so so they're gonna do death defying feats and stunts, and uh, if you're into that, that'll be right there at the uh, Calico uh, Mine stage. So my number four show is gonna be the your yours, Cruelly Elvira. Um. As much as everybody loves Elvira, I don't really know what to expect from this show. And I don't think that she's going to be there very many nights. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know. That's why it's going to be my number four. I don't know what to expect. And I feel like if it's called the Elvira show, maybe um, the person should be there. Not to be rude, just it's named that way. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Number three is Conjured. Uh, that is returning back in the Birdcage Theater this year again. And uh, I mean, I think I've seen it many times. Unless they're doing something different this year, I may check it out just to see if they did it, do anything different. But uh, it's something that I've seen a few times, and usually it's all kind of the same showing, uh, which it's not a bad thing. Obviously, all these shows are going to be the same showing, but 
uh, it, you know, it's just one of those things where um, I, I don't know. If you've seen it once, you've seen it many times. So it is what it is. Uh, number three, it's going to come out a bit of a shock for everybody, will be the Hanging Errors Tour. Uh, I didn't make time last year to see the Hanging, um, but I heard it was good, so no complaints on that front, but I just haven't made time to do it. I'm not super high in my priorities when I go to the event each and every year, um, but it usually does provide, and obviously it did well enough to come back. Um, after it's time away. Uh, you have The Conjures. Um, it's in the Birdcage Theater. Now, this is like an illusionist show. I'm assuming some type of magic. You know, it's an illusion. Here's a bunny in my hat, and now it's not there anymore. So um, that's in the Birdcage. Again, you, uh, you'll you have to check the times. Um, I don't know if they're on the app yet, but definitely when you get there, um, you're going to want to game plan the, if, especially if you want to see shows and you don't have the past, you're going to, going to want to kind of game plan what shows you want to see if that's like a priority or, you know, what you kind of want to do. But anyway, the, uh, number three for me is the conjures in the birdcage. Uh, again, it's like an illusionist show. So, um, you know, it's magic, magic. Um, uh, my number three is going to be the hanging despite it being back last year and having a lot of fun attending the hanging and listening and watching and everything i feel like despite it saying that it's uncensored and uncensored it's still a bit censored and i don't know maybe it's just me not being uh, up to date with everything that's going on in the world i'm often in the dark about a lot of things but that's kind of by no fault but my own and i don't like following mainstream things so Again, that's another reason why I just kind of stay away from things. But when it comes to shows like The Hanging, you kind of need to be in the know and know what's in fashion or if trending, you know what I mean, in order to get those jokes. But that's why it's my number three. Number two, Carnival du Grotesque. Now, this is a show that every year continues to impress me. Uh, there's new acts that are constantly being added, returning acts, uh routines dance routines and little uh, midway between setting up each act uh you know those little like skits and stuff they do an amazing job uh with this show and if you've like never been to a circus or like anything like that or an old school like um an old school like freak show or something like that this gives off those vibes in the best way possible and they continue to impress every single year the my favorite part about watching this show every single year is just hearing the crowd's reactions because like I will have seen it a couple of times but like some of those people in that crowd have only seen it for the first time so to hear the reactions to the stunts it is uh, awesome and I know Hayes is a huge fan of this show so we'll be definitely be seeing it at least once or twice. Number two for me is going to go to Yours Cruelly Elvira. This was a show that's a, basically a new take on the 50th anniversary show they did inside the uh, Charles Schwartz Theater. Uh, or Schultz Theater, I'm sorry. So I'm just excited to see what they do this time. Um, I know that Elvira is going to be at the event a, a few nights this year, signing autographs inside of the Tribute Store. Um, and so I imagine she will be making some guest appearances, not as Elvira, but as Cassandra Peterson, her actual identity. Um, and so I definitely think that the cast is going to bring it because they're going to want to make sure that they are doing the older shows and, and numbers a great amount of justice next on the list for me is the hanging now um i enjoyed the hanging i didn't, actually didn't get to see it live last year i just watched a lot of footage of it but i thought it was really cool it was cool to have it back i like i like that they were taking shots at everyone and that's one of the things that if you're going to go see the hanging you know you're probably going to be offended and just remember to have a sense of humor about it like i can be offended actually i don't get offended i just everything is funny to me if you make fun of me that's funny if you make someone else and make fun of someone else that's funny just you got to have a sense of humor going into this you got to know what kind of show it is it's definitely a uh you know they they make fun of pop culture they make fun of politics they make fun of everyone no one is safe in the hanging and the lawman will uh hang someone so that's next on my list is the hanging for number two it's gonna be conjures uh again i don't really know what to expect from conjures i know you're supposed to be going through a science but what's gonna be happening during the science 
it kind of intrigues me, but that's going to be my number two. Uh, and of course, by process of elimination, my favorite show at Not Scary Farm of all time is making its return with The Hanging, The Heirs Tour. Now, I love this play on words because The Heirs Tour is supposed to be a nod and a, and a parody of The Heirs Tour from Taylor Swift. So already we're, we're getting we're getting jokes as it is in the show. We haven't even seen the show just by the title. We're getting fucking um we're getting parodies already, and I love that. And and they made sure to tell everyone that if you are offended, then don't come and watch the show because uh, you know there's going to be a lot of jokes like that. And me personally, comedy is not meant to be uh, PG or censored. It's it's meant to be offensive and funny. Um, so I cannot wait to see what they pull out this year. As far as uh, the hanging goes it's always a fun time who are they going to hang this year this year they said they're not going to use the new nobu necklace they're not going to use a karen to hang this year like they did last year they're bringing back the old school noose so i'm excited for that and i'm excited to see uh who is the victim of the hangman's hanging this year at the hanging airs tour so um and last and certainly not least coming in at number one for me is carnival de grotesque um it's one of my favorite show shows each and every year um, and it's something I enjoy walking by. It really brings a fun, high energy performance each and every time I've seen it. I love that you can just see the show each and every time you walk by over there by the uh, mine raid on the outdoor stage. Um, and it's a super fun show. Um, and I, I think they do a great job each and every year. And so that's why that is my number one. The one I'm most excited for is the Elvira experience. Um, It's pretty much like a tribute show to Elvira, the 20 years that she's been with Not Scary Farm. Uh, from what I've gathered and stuff I've read, they're going to show like some footage, like behind the scenes stuff throughout the years. Uh, and also uh, uh, like just show her her career at Not Scary Farm and kind of pay like homage to Elvira, the mistress of the dark being there. So um, as far as the show's going to go, I don't know if they're actually going to show like if it's going to be footage or if there's going to be a dance numbers, not really sure, but we're going to be in there and we're going to pay tribute to the mistress of the dark Elvira. So that's pretty much the most hyped show on four. I've seen the Elvira show when she was there, enjoyed it. She puts on a really good show, very entertaining. So I hope they do something um, similar. I know she's only going to be there a couple nights, but I hope they do uh, some kind of like maybe like an Elvira impersonator and kind of like, um, do that type of show where it's like a Elvira's there, but it's, you know, just kind of like someone impersonating her doing the song and dance, the whole comedy thing. So I would really enjoy that. I think that would be really cool. My number one for anybody that knows me knows that I love clowns. I love circus themes. So Le Magnifique Carnival de Grotesque is going to be in my number one. And I just love watching the show. Can't get enough of Cuchillo and can't get enough of the acts that they have going on there. So that's my number one. It's always a good time. That is my most hyped and most uh, most hyped scare zones and shows, as well as the other crew. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Tune in tomorrow for our most hyped mazes. Now that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a long one much like this one, but stay tuned. It's going to be a fun time. Those are fun videos to watch. Uh, and then it's fun to talk about after like how much of our lists has changed. So uh, let's tune in tomorrow for that. And then we have two bonus videos coming out for you this Saturday and Sunday. So tune in for that. If nothing else more, I'm Anthony and we are the Knights of Horror. And I will see you guys tomorrow for day five of Not Scary Farm Week. Stay spooky.